Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, it's Skelet Co. It was my birthday a few days ago, which when you, by the time you see that video, it will be like already a week past, so. Just say that, no shame in it for real. And I've got things for my birthday. So I thought we could do get ready with me, I've got little things here you might recognize some things on my wish list actually if you watch my video about my with my wish list you probably recognize a lot of things and my partner who is the most lovely little schnitzel angel got me this beauty oh my god it's so beautiful and i don't know why it's so beautiful with an american accent i think i never had such a like expensive looking panic I know that's cardboard, but it just feels nice and weighty and big. It just, oh my goodness. Anyway, <clears throat> um, yeah, so because it's my birthday, I thought we could celebrate by uh, talking about depression. Before we get started, this is your first time here. Hi, my name is Celeste. I love cruelty free makeup, skincare, as well as olive undertone on things. So if you're into any of these topics, hobbies, whatever you want to call them, then consider subscribing. I would love to have you here. Uh, let's get into the video thing. Cool, things I've got for my birthday. Well, actually, this is things I bought for myself and the palette is my palette that got it for me. I got a couple of liquid lipstick from Melt. I was not planning on getting these, but they were really on offer on Beauty Bay and these are colors I wanted to get, golden and fawn. And the thing is, I got the ginger liquid lipstick from them and I'm obsessed with the formula. It's my favorite liquid lipstick formula at the moment because it looks so freaking smooth. It's so comfortable. It doesn't transfer everywhere. Just a nice, beautiful, smoothing matte. I love it. It just looks incredible on my lips. I've got a couple of lashes from Luna Beauty. One pair of, uh, was on my wish list, which was Luna. I got a couple of blushes from KVD Beauty because I wanted that color, but that color looks stunning, so I couldn't help myself. I think they were on offer too. And I've got dun, 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 the Muse Beauty uh, Impressionism palette because I've literally looked at it for like two months. I probably watched entire YouTube using that palette. I watched Madeleine's video at least like three times each. Actually, I, I don't regret it. I can't wait to play with it. We're not gonna play with it today, I'm sorry. But this will make an appearance in my palette infinity because I really want to explore that palette. But today we're gonna play with my new Mary Jane palette from Mel Cosmetics. Oops. There's something cool I didn't realize. This is vegan, so this palette is vegan. Usually cool tone palettes are not because it's usually carmine. I wasn't sure about putting in my wish list for my partner because I was thinking I've seen so many lukewarm reviews. I was kind of like, I'm not really sure. I mean, though I really want a cool tone palette. I think it's, it's not fully a 100% cool tone palette. This is what I consider a neutral leaning cool palette with a freaking olive oil. To look at this shades here. I'm obsessed. This is so beautiful. So yeah, that's why I end up putting in my wish list. Hang on, I might get some earphones because I'm kind of anxious at the moment <laughs> for some reason. Oh, that's better. Cool. Um that's from my eyes. Oh, and it's always the case, I always list everything in the description below because I might not mention the products. I'll try and display on the screen, but it will also be in the description, so, yes. So last time I did a video about my kind of, as a mental health update, I had been signed up for work for a while, for a month or so, because my depression was really getting worse. I just couldn't handle it anymore. I needed to like basically set up things, support for myself. And then I went back to work uh, once I had medication sorted, therapy sorted and all that. And I kind of like slowly reinserted myself into work, but quite quickly, because I think I went back to work. I think, did I do like three days a week or four days a week to start with? And then I'm, after a month, I went back like full time. And then I realized that full time was not for me. So I went part time. And guess what? 
I have been signed off work again. <laughs> I think this time was more my decision last time, it was not, no, no, the last time wasn't my decision, but I think it was strongly suggested by my boss. The issue is the support I thought I had at the beginning didn't end up being enough for me to keep going. So basically I was back to square one where I felt like I didn't have really any support or my support was not enough I need to keep going with work. And it's just like days were difficult, but then there was this extra layer of like, I have to work, especially there was quite a high pressure period at work. Uh, I won't go into too much details because I don't want to talk too much about work, but not really pressure coming directly from work, thankfully, but more like the context of the work, if that makes sense. Not from people directly. But. What I mean by support is that um, I basically, I, I will go into details. I will speak about medication because I think it's important. I think people don't talk enough about it. And there's a huge taboo around medication. There's loads of stereotypes surrounding them, stigma that is wrong, like ideas that we think, uh, we think what medication is when we talk about antidepressant. It's not what we, it's not at all what we think it is. So yeah, so I started my in September to like talk to my doctor and get back into onto antidepressants. I've been on antidepressants about five years ago, maybe seven. I can't remember. Yeah, about that. And I was put on a specific kind of antidepressants. Uh, the molecules called valafexin, which is. Basically, there are main, two main families of antidepressants that your doctor is likely to prescribe you. And one family is really the one we usually go for because they're the most common and the least like unpredictable and the ones that work most of the time. And then there's a second family. Uh, I think rap is not doing it for me at the moment. I need something else. And basically, just to make it really short, I was prescribed antidepressants from the second family, which is usually the one you go for when the first family doesn't work for you. Uh, and I don't know why, because I never had antidepressants before. I think it's probably because the general practitioners are uh, like, usually not trained very well on mental health, depression and all that. They usually don't have much knowledge in, uh, around antidepressants, just really basic one. And it means that uh, they are likely to not prescribe you the right thing or just not be very helpful in this situation. It's not their fault, it's just the way people are trained and there's a huge stigma around mental health, as you know, and all that. So I've been put on Valafaxin because it was what I had a while ago. I felt like it worked at the time. It, usually if you find an antidepressant that works for you, then you're likely to be put onto that. It's a molecule because antidepressants are a bit complicated to calibrate for since everyone's like brain chemistry is different, no, all the same molecules for, for, for work for everyone and don't interact the same way. So I was put on the initial dose, dosage, which is 75 milligrams. And at first I was like, took a month. I was like, everything is fine now. And I really feel like, oh, that's the shit. That's what I need. I, I felt a lot better, I felt less anxious. I felt like I was capable to do things again. And obviously I have been on a break for a month, which is always very helpful when work can be a source of stress as well, especially for me, I think it was. I'm not sure what it was. I don't know if it worked for me at the time and I just got worse. I think what's likely is I had like a placebo effect of like, I'm an antidepressant, I'm fine now. Reality is, bitch wasn't fine. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I've been on this for like a few months and it went fine. Uh, I mean, Venafaxin is, uh, has quite like, it's not the most tolerated, it has quite severe side effects. It's quite hard to come off of. But um, like, I had a little bit of headaches, it was kind of fine. And then December, January kicked in, I was like, I can't deal with this. It just like, I think work became that thing where I just was looking forward to just being on holiday. It was just all about surviving until the next holiday. And then I had these two holidays in like, at the end of December, like Christmas and stuff. And then I came back to work, I think everything kind of collapsed. I was kind of like, 
what do I do now? So I was kind of like, well, I feel like when I talk to other people with antidepressants, many my sister, it's like day and night when they find the right thing. And for me, it wasn't day and night. It was like, it's okay, you know? Um, so I talked to my mental health nurse and he said, well, we're gonna increase your dosage, which we did. So we went from 75 to 150. But you kind of go back to like an adjustment period, which is never fun for antidepressants. You have quite serious side effects and things don't at the beginning. And usually you get worse before it gets better. And whenever you adjust your dosage, that's what happens. So you you don't get the effects of the antidepressant at least three weeks, usually three to six weeks. Uh, by the way, I'm not a professional, so don't use that as a, that's just my own experience. I'm just explaining the law knowledge I have, but yeah, in case you, you don't know much. Oh my God, I love this shade. Oh, that's, by the way, that's Gasper. That's that olive kind of neutral brown. It's so beautiful. Uh, anyway, what was I getting with this? So yeah, 150 milligrams of malafaxine, major headaches, kept having them for like a while. Things were not really getting better. So I was like, could we try something else? Uh, Cause it's, it's not working. I thought I could try like maybe regular antidepressants cause I knew by that point I was meant to start with these, but I didn't. And um, yeah. So my mental toughness was a bit surprised that I didn't start with this because well, as I said, it's usually what you start with. So we started a plan to stop me from using, from taking the life vaccine, which was horrible. <laughs> I was going to say that, um, yeah, I had basically, I had a withdrawal, well, I call withdrawal syndrome. So I had major like, uh, exhaustion, anxiety, uh, major depressive episode. Um, and like, I had like, um, kind of like a feeling of shock in my body, but like every seconds, like every 10 seconds I would get that. I was meant to work at the same time, it was horrible. High pressure, I was meant to deal with that. And it was just, uh, it was horrible. <laughs> Thankfully, eventually it stopped. And then what was good is actually my mental health nurse was kind of like, well, you can choose between three of the uh, SSRI. I think that's the, if I remember the correct, yes, SSRI, which is the first family I was talking about of antidepressants. You can choose between the three, read about them, see what you want to use, which I think was lovely, actually. I really love that because I find that, I was quite surprised, but it was really good because a lot of kind of health professional don't really take into account you and your opinion and kind of like what you think of things and what happens to your body. I think that's really positive though. It's kind of like, well, you can choose between these three because it's like, we're just, they, they're like equivalent things. It's just that some of them are like working better for other, for some people and you can kind of read and feel like what well, you want to try. And at first I thought I wanted to try sertraline, which is uh, the one my sister is on, it works for her. And usually if you have someone in your family that has an antidepressant that works for them, it's usually the first one that is given to you because you're likely to have a bit more of common brain chemistry because you know of genes and all that. Um, but then I was like, I read about it and I've seen that actually sertraline is not really indicated for treating like um, generous anxiety disorder, which is what I think I have because I have generous anxiety. It's something I discussed with my psych uh, psychologist, even though I've never been officially diagnosed for it. And, um, you know, I just, I say I have anxiety. It's just like, it's something I experience in like everywhere. So anyway, Citalopram was, and it's the one I've seen that most people seem to go well with, seems to have very little side effects. Um, so yeah, I thought I would try this one first and then I can try Citroen after. So I've been on Citroen Prime ever since. When was that? Was it like March or so? We kept increasing the increasing the dose, so staying at 10 milligrams, 20. I was on 30 recently and then I'm like currently stopping it because it's just not doing much for me, to be honest. I don't have any side effects, which is great. I didn't gain any weight. I didn't... Um, get my major headaches or anything. It's just not doing anything for me. 
<laughs> except that I feel very tired whenever I change to dosage. So we're gonna try citrulline, which I'm thankful for because my mental health nurse last time was kind of like, well, we're gonna increase that one, one last time, but likelihood is maybe medication is not for you. So I was kind of like a bit bummed about because I felt like just trying two medications didn't seem like a lot of trial because usually people might try at least three, uh, four or five, depends. But actually I was kind of like, again, it was kind of really taking into consideration my own, I, I keep like blending and talking, but I need to like move on with this, sorry. Let me take a break, I'm gonna move on with this look and then I go back to whatever I was saying, if I remember. <laughs> Hello back. I get the critique of the palette with the color story. I can't, I'm sorry. It's just, have you seen this? Sorry, I meant to say, have you seen this? Because I'm obsessed. Uh, no, I mean, I, I get, I get, I think it's, um, it's very, the mats are fine, but I find the shimmers are quite, I like kind of that chunky, very textured uh, shimmer, very sparkly, which that I think can please a very niche type of people, but probably not mainstream. I think because it's a neutral palette, maybe people kind of like, oh, but I think it's more targeted towards like that kind of young audience with very smooth eyelid. I think I'm, I'm like, it's not an easy palette to work with, but I'm ready to put on the work to use it because it's just beautiful. That's what I have to say. Uh, let's do some face makeup now. So as I was saying, Citaro Prime didn't work for me, kept increasing, nothing happened. Now I'm in the, actually in the transition to try, uh, try sertraline, but I need to stop Citaro Prime. So I'm currently reducing my dose. And hopefully I will be okay. I'm just kind of very tired. Which I think I, is, I attribute to this, but also think, I mean, depression can exhaust you. So obviously because my medication has been working, means that I've been like basically kind of, not really going, I wouldn't say going without a safety net because I still have medication, I have therapy, but I think therapy, it might just be me, but I feel like I've been in therapy since September. I feel like it's gonna take forever for me to like really see the effect of it. I see things, doesn't mean I feel not depressed anymore, if that makes sense. I see like things I'm doing and trying to be healthier by it. But it's just, it's a lot of work and it's really exhausting to do, particularly when you're already in the state where you're ex already exhausted and not want to do anything. The other thing that has been going on is, I think that's what I suspect because I have, I feel like I have chronic depression issues, anxiety and stuff. Uh, cause clearly it's not a first depression I do and I'm kind of wondering, I'm kind of always in that kind of slight depressive state. So I don't know if it's a depression that hasn't been treated. It's just me that like constantly get that. Um, but yeah, I've always been very anxious, very emotional since ever. My mom, if I asked my mom, she would always describe me as being very anxious, scared, shy, child. I feel like doing a matte face to this. I'm gonna do a combo I've been obsessed with. Uh, my Ruben de Castaigne kit, a foundation, which is in my uh, project pan. I know Too Faced, not good, etc. I mean, I'm just trying to use that up. But uh, the Peach Perfect foundation, matte, smoothing. These are beautiful together. This is too dark for me, so that's why I mix it up. It also looks a bit dry on me. It's something I noticed particularly this year and like since the pandemic started. So I don't know if it's symptoms that start appearing. I don't think it is. I think it's things that I had forever. It just got exacerbated because I'm feeling worse. Major, major concentration issues, like literally tasks have started all over the house. Uh, laundry half ready to be done and laundry ready to be folded. Another one kind of starting to be put, to be dried like all of the three simultaneously like being half done. Uh, work was so difficult because of that. Um, and just lots of things I struggled with. Senses, um, I have major, like I can get really easily, I can't with loud noise, it gives major major anxiety. Sudden noise in the street, I get, 
I'm very nervous, like I get startled super easily, but loud noise in the street and just being really sensitive to noise, find difficult to for conversation in a bar because it just feels like all the conversation for me are on the same level, so I can't follow a conversation, let alone in a second language. It's just terrible for me. So what I've been suspecting is maybe I have a DHG. That's what we're kind of like been wondering for a year now. My nephew has been diagnosed with ADHD because uh, he's young and he was it was a very noticeable ADHD, like the hyperactive one. So, and my sister, I think, was really like, I think she's someone that is really like, she really works to lift the stigma around um, health issues, but especially mental health issues. So I got in touch with a mental health nurse on a like, uh, kind of assessment or medication. He invited me to the surgery for face-to-face -face appointment. And yeah, I was kind of like, I suspect I have a DHG. And basically I'm now waiting because it was, it was very like understanding and listening. Asked me a few questions, got me to feel a little like a uh, piece of paper with like different symptoms. Everything fell into gray for me, which means like likely to have ADHD, obviously, because it else <laughs> it's not fun. And yeah, um, and ever since I've been waiting and that's the issue because I'm going through uh, the like public health service in Scotland, it means that it's free, which is, I'm, I'm very thankful for. Uh, I mean, the technically I'm paying for it, like everyone's paying for it, but you know, it's, I'm really grateful we have that kind of health service system in the UK. You can wait forever to get an assessment. When it comes to mental health, there's so little resources. People asking for therapy on wait lists for like years. And I don't know if I need to carry in months or years, and that's my worry. I'm kind of like wondering if I should go and get an assessment privately, but it's just so expensive and it's hard to justify. So yeah, now it's a waiting game and I'm just hoping... <sighs> it's just, the thing is, a lot of time when you look up things, it's like, oh, I, it sounds like me, but you know, there's the Barnum effect where you like, whatever you read, you think it's like you, but it's also like, I never find out fit like the descriptions because a lot of time descriptions of like conditions can be quite extreme. It's like, oh yeah, it's not quite that. And the right is, well, I didn't think I had depression. I've clearly fallen into the umbrella of depression and other like mental health conditions, which I didn't think I had like uh, PTSD and other things. So, and again, the thing with the issue is difficult to diagnose as an adult, but it's also like a lot of symptoms can be like, because we put these barriers for like mental health conditions, but the variety of things is just arbitrary ones. And, um, a lot of conditions share similar symptoms. So PTSD can give you concentration issues, for example. Um, or bipolar disorder can give you ADHD symptoms and so on. And I'm really hoping it could be that. I feel like it's likely I just, I'm just hoping that I can get help. That's the thing. And that's what I want. And hopefully get medication therapy to help with that. Clearly there's something wrong if I'm like, constantly struggling so much with myself, my life. Yeah, I think I think that foundation is blended. I've been there for like five minutes. <laughs>
everything that is with me, it's just like it will all freaking make sense. Because people with these, you usually have some sort of like, it's kind of linked to autistic traits. It's like something I kind of like been really kind of feeling a bit like connected with mainly because of the sensorial issue, but also uh social and relationship issues that would explain as well so much and like the fact that i get really bored reasoning in life and things and the reason why i'm just like struggling so much so i don't know uh i'm keeping my fingers crossed for myself and uh i've got these two everlasting blush uh i really wanted to use that one but i think with this eye look this will work better so i think i'm gonna use that one by the way the colors are rosebud which is like the movie pink one and this is foxglove i think i feel like the color looks stunning so i was like i can't they are on offer i'm gonna freaking get them i'm sorry and they're very apparently very unique colors and i can see why because they have quite a strong kind of almost gray cool tone undertone which i'm obsessed with you know that so let's try a bit and see how, if I can, ooh. Okay, I think it might be quite, they might be pigmented like the way I want it to be. Let me do a bit my nose, because I want to. That That's the issue with me, and I struggle so much, you don't see it, because I did a, doing a get ready with me videos, they're probably the most difficult ones to do, because I keep getting distracted mid thoughts while I'm talking. It's like, this is what happens constantly for me. I'm pretty sure that's not normal, okay? <laughs> I might try the other one. Just to kind of cool it down a bit. I kind of forgot to do that. Ooh, okay, I think I went a bit heavy-handed here. So see, you can really build it up, even though it doesn't look like you quite can in the pan. That's what I love about these blushes. Let's stop with blushes, sorry about that. Let's finish up the eyes and then we'll move on to finishing the face and stuff, you know. Did I say everything I wanted to say actually? No, I think I'm better. I feel like there were other things I wanted to say but I can't remember where it was. Oh yeah, basically I think something to know if you've never had antidepressants is that people think it's a quick fix instead of going to therapy and stuff, which I mean is bullshit because the reality is to you much better in getting better mentally, you much better trying a holistic approach where you do different things. So therapy, medication, exercising, changing things in your everyday life and so on. That's the best way of getting better. Because honestly, if you have any sort of like mental health kind of illness issues, you know that it's really get it's so fucking difficult getting out of them. I was kind of like shocked because the first time I was kind of diagnosed with depression, I was, I got better quite easily through uh, medication and stuff. But I realize now I kind of like, it's so difficult getting out of it. At the moment, I'm kind of in a really, living with a pandemic, living with a Pandora boxes that's happening. Uh, it's even more difficult to get out of it. Um, so yeah, honestly, uh, so yeah, medication and not quick fix. Not only because they, they take a long time to act, like as I said, three weeks to six weeks, it doesn't sound like a quick fix to me. And beyond that, actually adjusting, finding the right molecule and, and finding the right dosage for you takes forever. I mean, and it, it's almost, sorry. It's almost been a year since I started medication. I'm still having it figured out. I'm going back to square zero, like for the second time. So, yeah, don't, don't. Honestly, trust me, it is not an easy road. Well, I think it is. And, oh, this shade. I want that shade everywhere. There's Jasper again. Obviously, it's Jasper. Gaspar. Sorry, what did I say? It's a Jasper. I thought I was in toilet or some shit. Gasper, sorry. I think I'm also realizing stuff when it comes to mental health and as I said, the whole holistic approach. This is so freaking important. Uh, like, I thought I could get away with just like doing a bit of therapy and medication and it's fine, but... Bitch, no. I, I'm i gonna start trying getting into exercises. I absolutely despise, hate exercising. And for me, the issue with exercising is I find it really boring to do and 
so interesting. Like, it's pretty beyond my understanding that people are like going to the gym and talk about going to the gym. Because for me, it's just like peeing is just something you have to do. But apparently, people love, are super interested into that. So I don't know. <laughs> can relate. But yeah, I'm gonna start getting to exercising. So. I actually ordered, um, actually got um, Ring Fit Adventure, which is a, a switch game where you get like a Pilates ring and you can basically it's you getting you to do exercising to progress in the game, which I think would be the best way of tricking me into doing exercise. And the problem is exercising can help with mental health issues because it helps you produce certain hormones regularly and that contribute to the well-being of yourself. So it's so freaking annoying because I hate going to the doctor and they tell me to freaking exercise because it's also like, it's also, I think it's also because I'm fat and people, people just assume I don't do anything. Anyway, I'm so freaking glad that I managed to keep making videos because I really like doing videos and I can see my channel growing and I finally have people that can chat a little bit about makeup with in the comments and stuff. I absolutely love that because unfortunately, I think it's linked to the way I was growing up and just being a world in general, but I kind of put on being extremely anxious and having maybe possibly an ADHD, but social relationship I've really never been really good at and uh, I always struggle to make connections with people and keeping these connections so um so yeah I'm I'm so glad I did that because having makeup has been such a like therapy thing to do it sounds like stereotypical but people think that it's really superficial makeup beauty and all that but the variety of things is like at the end of the day feeling beautiful makes you feel good and beauty is a subjective concept, but creating a piece of art on your face is, I think it's a way of reappropriating your body and just like uh, autonomy and just, yeah, making, making beautiful things that you feel are beautiful in your eyes and just displaying into the other world. I don't know, that's how I say it. Maybe corny a bit, but for me, one of the biggest things I've learned this year is that it's better to do something not perfectly than not do it at all. And that applies, it sounds like sh like shit advice, it's like obviously. But if you're like me, you kind of like, you might be skipping things, you might not shower because you're like, oh, I'm so tired, I'm not, I don't want to shower. Oh, I don't want to brush my teeth, it's going to take forever. Oh, I don't want to go for a walk, I don't want to do that. Getting yourself and telling yourself, Maybe I could do it even for a minute. Mind blown. <laughs> it's just, it really, it, like, because again, it's like, rather than being like, it's okay not to brush your teeth, you can be like, actually, what you can do is you brush it for 30 seconds, which is a lot easier than it is to brush it for three minutes. And it's so much better than not doing it at all. And that has helped me tremendously. It means I can actually get myself move my arms to do things, which are things that are important to getting better. That's the thing. And that's the issue with depression is you don't want to do things that will make you feel better because you're too tired to do them. Well, tiredness. Apparently, I didn't know, but like people that have it, you are tired all the time. I think that's like the biggest thing for me. I mean, it's a uh, tiredness is like a symptom you can get with pretty much anything, but Oh my God, I'm tired all the time, no matter how much I sleep. It's like, I don't, I know I don't sleep enough, but even days, like weeks where I sleep like plenty, eight, nine hours, and recently has been more of that case. I'm still freaking exhausted all the time. It's not like to depression. I've always been freaking exhausted. I have been known as like the zombie in school, as like the one that's always tired, and that always looks tired. Cool. I think what we're going to do is... <laughs> is uh, I'm gonna, maybe we're gonna just pray a face and I'm gonna finish up the eye with some lashes and stuff.
I'll come back for a wee moment with you. Hey. So I've never worn such huge lashes. So I'm not really good at putting lashes, so I hope it doesn't look too ridiculous. But I think I like it. It's just on my hooded eyes, it's kind of like it's hiding all the makeup, but I quite like it. And can we take a minute to admire like that beautiful packaging? It's really stunning for these lashes, so I really appreciate them. Cool. Um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna roll with these lashes and see. Yeah, let's do a lip, I think. I've got these two lipstick from Melt. I was thinking I would just use that one today. Fingers. Because this is like a cool tone brown. This is like a yellow tone brown. I kind of want to do like an ombre lip. Is that allowed? I'd like to see how they mix first, maybe, so. So the, this is foam and this is golden. So it's like a kind of a mustard situation. Yeah, I think I can, I can try do that. So I think I may just do that. And let's just, I'm just gonna dot. So maybe I can't really ombre, if that makes sense. So it just will mix. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that, but that's okay. Let me try with a different lip liner from Colourpop. I think that's the finished look. I'm obsessed with this palette. I'm so glad I got it now. Thank you very much, my partner. And Crane, love you. That's probably gonna be a long one, I'm sorry about that. I mean, I say that now, but it's... It's too late now because you already watched it. If you're... Anyway, if you want to support me in my channel, you can give this video a like, you can leave a comment, I love chatting with you folks. Any engagement with my content helps me gain visibility in the YouTube algorithm, and so that's always appreciated. If you don't want comment to leave but you still want to support me, you can leave a comment with this birthday themed emoji. I will leave it in the description so you can copy paste it in case you don't have access to an emoji keyboard. And I thank you very much for your efforts. Thank you so, so much for watching. Take care of yourself. That's very important to take care of yourself. And I'll see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.